Hi everyone, welcome to What I Ate for Vegan June Day 10. And so for breakfast yesterday, I made an apple crumble jar. I started by making some cinnamon nice cream using one frozen chopped banana. And I blended that up in my food processor until almost smooth. I then added in half a teaspoon of cinnamon and blended it up again for around 15 seconds. And in a medium sized jar, I added two tablespoons of apple sauce. The recipe for this is down below. Then a layer of oat clusters. Again, the recipe for this is in the description box. And then two scoops of cinnamon nice cream. And I repeated that a second time around to fill the jar up to the top. I also did a hot breakfast apple and pear crumble recipe before as well so I'll link to that below too but this is great as a summer option it honestly just tastes like apple crumble or apple pie again it's something you can take to work with you in the jar for a breakfast or a mid-morning snack though the ice cream will probably melt so instead you could use some coconut cream and then just keep the jar in the fridge for a mid-morning snack I made some cheesy courgette crisps I first preheated my oven to 100 degrees Celsius and then I sliced up two courgettes as thin as I could get them. You could use a mandolin if you have one, that would be so much easier. I then spread them out on my chopping board and pressed down on them with a few sheets of kitchen paper to soak up the excess water from them, which just means that they'll bake a bit quicker. I then moved them onto a lined baking tray and drizzled over one teaspoon of olive oil sprinkled over a teaspoon of garlic powder, half a teaspoon of mustard powder and a pinch of ground black pepper and then I sprinkled over my nutritional yeast, around three tablespoons. I made sure that they were well spread out and then I popped them in the oven for 40 minutes. They shrink considerably in size, as you can see, it looks like half the amount, but once they're out of the oven, I leave them to cool down as they then go even crispier. I'm such a chips and dips kind of person and this is a great, healthier option and I had it with some of my sun-dried tomato and olive hummus. You could do it with sweet potatoes, carrots, parsnips and you can totally experiment with flavours, herbs and spices to go on them. They are best eaten immediately though as they tend to go a little bit soft and soggy if they're left for too long. For lunch I made a mini superfood base pizza. I first sliced up a tomato and then four mushrooms and a small piece of pineapple. I then placed a piece of superfood bread on a lined baking tray and added on some of my homemade ketchup as the tomato base. I then placed on my toppings the tomato, the mushrooms and then the pineapple sprinkled over some nutritional yeast and then added on some sliced black olives. I popped that under the grill for around 10 minutes and then served it up with some fresh basil leaves on top and it just made for such a quick lunch. As I've said before, you can freeze these slices so you can throw this whole pizza together in a matter of minutes and it's so filling too. It also works really well when it's cold so it's another one that can be cut into smaller slices and taken in a container with you to work. For a snack in the afternoon I made a really simple strawberry smoothie and for this I just added 400 millilitres of sweetened oat milk into my food processor along with one banana and one cup of whole strawberries and I blended that up until it was smooth. I poured it out into a jar and I had that with a naked bar in the very cheeky flavour and all that goes into this is dates, oats, raisins, peanuts, apple juice concentrate, almonds, walnuts, raspberries and strawberries. So flavour wise it obviously went really well with the smoothie and this is like one of my go to smoothies. I think it was probably the first smoothie I ever made. For dinner I made some Thai cakes with a mango salad. I first peeled and quartered two medium potatoes and then boiled them up until they were soft. In this time I made a mango salad to go with the cakes by cutting up half a mango, one carrot, one cucumber, 
one spring onion and one stalk of celery into matchsticks and then I also chopped up some mint and coriander. I then added in one tablespoon of lime juice. I gave that a good mix together with my hands and almost squeezed it as I was mixing it together just to get all the juices out of the vegetables and the mango. I then drained off the water from the potatoes and popped them in my food processor with one can of chickpeas, one chopped onion, one chopped red chilli, one finely chopped thumb sized piece of ginger, two minced cloves of garlic, one tablespoon of Thai basil paste or any Thai curry paste, one tablespoon of lime juice, some fresh coriander and a pinch of salt. I blended that up for around 20 seconds just so it's still a little bit chunky from the chickpeas which give them some texture. I then heated up one tablespoon of avocado oil in a pan and divided the mix into four, shaping them into potato cakes. I then cooked them in the pan for around 10 minutes on each side and once the cakes were cooked I made a bed of the salad on our plates and placed the Thai cakes on top I then drizzled over some of my sweet chili sauce the recipe for this is down below and these are a great alternative to Thai fish cakes the texture is very similar as are all of the flavours from the herbs and spices which are just amazing and all work so well together. This would also make for a great lunch option as well, you could eat it as a burger or with rice or quinoa too. For dessert I'd made these smoothie pudding cups. I had a little smoothie left over after my afternoon snack so I decided to add in three tablespoons of chia seeds, I used white chia seeds and then I poured the mix into some silicone cupcake cases and placed them in the freezer. The chia seeds thickened them anyway and they were in the freezer for a good few hours before we ate them which seemed to be just enough time for them to set and they made these little smoothie cups. It's a great way to use up leftover smoothie. Just bear in mind if your smoothie has banana in it the cups can't be left too long otherwise they do turn slightly brown. And it worked really well, it was somewhere in between an ice cream, a sorbet and some kind of frozen creamy pudding. You guys have been requesting more simple recipes and different ways to use recipes that I've already created so I really hope you found this helpful and that you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again tomorrow. Bye!